Scott, you guys are on to the playoffs now. Uh, just what's your reaction to advancing out of the play-in tournament? I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about, uh, about the group. I knew that we would bounce back. Uh, I'm glad they did it in the way that we did on, on both ends of the floor. But what we've been through, I, I, I mean, I've said it, documented it, talked about it enough, but it still feels great to anytime you can stick together through some tough times and, and, and keep fighting for one another. That's what sport is all about. And that's what teams are all about. And we got a good group of guys. That's why I love coaching this team because they're always, they're always challenging each other and pushing each other. And they deserve a lot of the credit, if not all of the credit by doing that. Cause it, it hasn't been easy um, for a lot of reasons. But the easy part of, of it was coaching this group. And that, that's what makes my job enjoyable. And, and Scott, uh, Daniel Gafford, 15 points, five blocks in the, the first half. I mean, this guy's 22. He's never been in the postseason before. How do you describe that performance? Um, <laughs> uh, special. His athleticism. Give, our, give him credit, man. He's, um, he's coachable. He wants to get better. He has an enthusiasm for the game. Smart kid, smart, um, quiet, quiet. But, you know, you can get some stuff out of him. He, he comes up with some good basketball stuff. So I like that about him. Still learning his game. I'm still learning him as a person. But from what I've seen the last couple of months, that's a big, big, big time pickup for Tommy uh, and our group. But our guards love playing with them. But I thought our, I thought. You know, someone told me that Alex never been in the playoffs either. So that's that's great. Because I thought, I mean, I don't know, how many, I don't even know how many points and rebounds he ended up having, four and seven. But I thought, I thought his minutes were critical and like huge for our success tonight, because he was guarding a guy that's kind of had our way, had his way against us, and he made him earn every bucket and he got him some foul trouble. And so I thought. Alex did good, and then Roll comes in. The three centers, I mean, look what they did. They all chipped in. They all contributed, and they, you know, they, it's, they don't get a lot of credit. They deserve a lot of credit because they get our guards open, and our guards appreciate all three of them. Okay. Ava? Um, Scott, you guys talked a lot about how, how Russ didn't get to celebrate his record setting run in front of crowds, but the moment in the third quarter where he, he got everybody kind of on their feet, did it, did it feel like postseason basketball? Did it feel like in that moment, like, oh yeah, this, this is a playoff game. Yeah. You know, what's crazy. I was, I was even thinking to myself when all that was taking place, it was such a cool moment. I've had such a, a lot of great moments with that, with that young man. And I just, I love the guy to death and love how he competes and but I was thinking of that man that, this is that had to be the loudest 5,000 uh fans in an arena that I've ever heard because there's a lot of you know there's what 15,000 seats are empty but it was loud and they were so uh enthusiastical throughout the game and to see Russell doing all those things and they they appreciate it and they what Brad Brad had a moment of this game it's really a, an interesting game because about Nine, eight or nine of our guys had like really big time six or seven minute spurts and won the game. And that's what a team is about. But Russell and Brad, it was, you know, it's great having fans. I'm not complaining because we only have five. It would be great if we can have more. But those fans got got their money's worth. And I'm sure they appreciate the work that this team has done and put in. And, and hopefully we made them proud during this run. Now we got a chance to, you know, play against one of the best teams in basketball, and we're excited about it. We know, we know what we can do and we, what we're about. We're, we're a much better team than we were in the first month of the season. We know that. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, Rui really fought through foul trouble the other night and just couldn't make as much of an impact because he just couldn't play that many minutes. Uh, how did you see that he kind of handled the last 48 hours after that game? And, and what did you make of the way he bounced back tonight? I like the, I like the fact that we all, we all had an edge to us. And you can ask uh, some of our coaches in our Zoom two-hour meeting today. I, I had an edge to, to myself. And I wanted our staff to have an edge. 
we were disappointed that we played the way we played in Boston, not taking away anything in Boston. We had a lot of things that, you know, the foul trouble, whatever, it didn't matter. We still didn't play well. And everybody took, took charge of, you know, ownership of that. And they wanted to come back better. And what's crazy is Russell didn't have a good game. And I've had so many text messages, man, what's wrong with Russell? I said, what's wrong with him? He's had two months of being like MVP numbers. He had a, he had a bad game. That's what's wrong. He's, he's not, not superhuman. But Rui comes back the same way. He came back with an edge. Uh, uh, he always has this serious approach, but you can just see that he wanted to play much better than the, than the, the previous outing. And, and you guys now have a series to prepare for against Philadelphia. I know obviously you haven't started the actual preparation for that, but, but how do you view that matchup upcoming, especially against uh, Embiid with the way he's played this year? Uh, you know, we, he's one of the best bigs, and he's one of the best bigs in a long time. But, hey, I got to tell our guys, there's no reason to, to, to fear anybody you play against. You respect them, and you compete against them. They, they put their socks on one, one, one sock at a time. On It's like us, unless they, unless they do something different, put them both on at the same time. But I don't think so. That's some tricky stuff there. But I, I think what, what we, we're about, we want to play. We want to play the way we've been playing. We've been really improving this last two months, and we know we're up. We're up. Um, it's a big challenge. They're a good team. They got a best record in in the East uh, for a reason. Uh, but it's we're the game is about forty eight minutes on on the on the um, clock. It's not about the noise that teams or people will say about the game. I love the fact that everybody talks about. Uh, playoff basketball because it's fun it's exciting this is what you play for I'm getting and we got players that never been in the playoffs and it's a great opportunity for them and then we got players that played big moments and big minutes in playoffs so we know they're a good team but we're we're a good team just as just as much as they are a good team yeah Scott I know we have talked about Russ a lot the last six weeks but you know him probably better than any of us. Um, what are the nonverbal cues he gives you when you know he's ready, when you know he's going to have a big game? Um, well, I've been around him so much now. I think I'm the only person that can talk to him on game days. <laughs> and I, I try to – I got a new pair of Nikes tonight, and they have one, – one, one side has a tag on it, I guess – you're supposed to keep it on. I was about to cut it off. So I talked to my fashion consultant before the game. I said, Russ, I need your help here. And he looks at me, what do you need, coach? I said, I got a new pair of Nikes. Do I cut this little tag off? He said, no, 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 you don't cut the tag off. That's what it's there for. I said, or I said, I don't have one on the right side. He says, no, you got it. Only, it's only one. Just leave it alone. They look good. Are they comfortable? And I said, yeah, okay. So I knew I, knew I did that because I know I can talk to him. But Russell has an edge to him, guys. And I think the world should appreciate that. And because you're not going to see an athlete like this many, many, many generations that want to win every possession, that wants to play every night. And he gives you everything. He gives you everything. He's just a, he's a, he's a hooper. And sometimes it's a, he's an angry hooper, but he's a hooper that just plays the right way and plays hard. But, I knew, I knew he wanted to come back better. Yeah. You know, I knew he wanted to come back better. And, and I knew he was going to lead us to a better outing because we didn't like it, what we did. I mean, like, like I said, give Boston credit. They played out, played us, and they, they deserved to win the game. But we, we should have – we didn't put up the better uh, – a better. we could have put up a better fight. We should have. I was disappointed in myself. I didn't – wasn't happy at all either. And in terms of – What's transferable from this year with what, with what Russ has brought to the organization going forward? What's, what are the things that you can build on going ahead with this group? Um, just a, uh, there's, there's a lot of things that he brings. And I can sit here all day and, and tell you a lot of them, but you probably already know him, but 
what he brings, he brings a championship mentality. And if you've never won a championship, you can still have a championship mentality. And I play with a lot of great players and coach against a lot of great coaches and they have it. It takes a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of good fortune and some luck to, to win one. We almost won it as a, as a group with him before, mm -hmm. but he brings that to us and he knows the steps that you have to do to get there. He's, he doesn't skip steps. He doesn't skip steps. He prepares and he's locked in. Like, like I've said many times, you go, you go with, with um, 60, 70 minutes on the game clock and you go walk through our locker room and it's like, looks like he's watching the most serious documentary on the television, uh, on the TV screen, but he's watching usually our last game against their opponent. He's so locked in, but he brings that professionalism, that, that excellence about doing your job every day and don't make excuses. You play through everything within reason, mm -hmm. but you always, you always commit to the game because the game can be taken away and you don't want to disappoint the game. And, and it's like, it's revered. And I think he brings that to our young guys. You know, some of our veteran guys, they've been, you know, they've been, they've already had their foundation. He can, we can tweak it, but the young guys, what he's going to bring to them, they're going to, in 10 years, they're going to be thankful that they had Russell, you know, for the first, you know, four or five years of their career. Scott Abraham. Hey, Scott, you mentioned it at the very beginning of how much this team has overcome from COVID to the losing streaks. And I'm wondering, because you've been in the NBA for a lot of years, is, it, is this one of the more rewarding accomplishments, rewarding runs that you've ever been a part of? Yeah, and they've overcome a lot. Bad coaching, you forgot that also, right? <laughs> they, 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 you know what? I love what I do, man. I love, I've, I've been, I've, I've been very, very lucky to be able to be in this NBA and it's a privilege for 30 years. And I love, I mean, I was, I love playing. I love being on a team. I love competing. I love practicing. I love getting fights with teammates. I love arguing and debating with people about the game. And now I get to do it as a coach, but I love coaching this team because we did things like other teams did probably too, but we've done things that there's no, there's no template. There's no book that we could have read. We didn't know. We didn't know 90% of the things that we were doing because we never, it was just all like we were learning it on the fly, not having practice, not having shoot around, being away from the team for 10 days, uh, having seven guys basically miss three weeks in January. And then all the injuries on top of that. But we, I, I couldn't ask for a better group of guys. And I, I'm thankful that I've been it, been with it through this group because it, they made it, they made it manageable and they made it exciting. Uh, and I'm I'm thankful to the coach this group. It, it's a fun group to be around. They're challenging at times. They're not always easy, but they're they're they've been you know they've been. None of our coaches can say anything bad about any of our guys because they compete every night. Thank you. All right, we'll take a couple more. Matt Paris. Scott, when you think about the trade back in December for, for Russ, I mean, is this a night that you really kind of appreciate that, just bringing him in, and when you really need to make the playoffs, you have a guy like that? Well, I can remember when we made the trade, and I knew what we were getting. Like I said, I've known, the, I've known Russell and his family for 13 years now, I coached him for seven years. We had a lot of very – incredible moments and some very exciting moments and fun moments and tough moments and angry moments at one another. I mean, I remember fighting them for over one minute. He wanted to average 35 minutes. I was fighting over me. No, you're averaging 34. <laughs> we fought for 20, 20 minutes in my office over that, like very animated uh, discussion, but I knew what we were getting. I, it's funny. There's another quick story about middle of the season after one of our losses and I knew, I knew, I don't know how long, I don't know. I don't even remember what game because everything just kind of, he gave a very passionate, very direct uh, talk to the group. 
And he was like, I am not going through this season and not making the playoffs. And he, not that he predicted it, but he says, I'm not going to let this happen and not make the playoffs. We're going to step up and fight for one another. And, and he went on and on and on. And I'm just like, that's a special young man there. And that's a passionate, that's almost like, you guys better be ready for about what's about to take place. And, and it, it turned, it turned around. I don't know if it was that uh, moment, but everybody jumped on and we, it was, it was a special, I know it was special for me to see him after all the things I've been through with him, you know, the previous seven years coaching him. I, I know you don't remember the game, but do you remember like the month or anything? No, it was probably a couple of months ago. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying it was right after the Phoenix game, but it, I know it was probably a couple of weeks before that. We didn't like start winning right away, but we there was a there was another like there was another awareness that like what's what are we about as a team? What are we gonna what are we gonna remember this year? We're gonna remember just giving in to all the all the craziness that took place, or we're we gonna remember for all the work that we put through to fight through all the craziness that took place. And as it, as it turned out, we're going to remember, and we still have more to add to that, but we're gonna, we get to remember of all the craziness that we went through and fought through and believed in each other through. Darren? Hey, Scott. Uh, you know, most of the questions are already answered, but I'm sitting here looking at some of the employees in Capital One Arena. And with COVID, it ended all their, you know, their jobs in here, knowing the fact that making this playoffs is going to give them another opportunity, a couple more days to go to work. Which, uh, how, how does that make you feel? How would you describe that, or what that you think that means to them? I, uh, we love them, and that's uh, that's a that's trust me that they have not gone unnoticed. I've became become friends with a lot of them, the ones I see every game, and you miss them, and you know that it's two things. They they love being around the team they love being in in the city and they're in their arena and, and supporting our team but it also i mean it's supplements income as well so it's a great i mean i'm i'm so happy I, like i said it's only five thousand, but it's better than um with nobody it was i mean now that it's passed it was the worst playing playing in front of nobody it was absolutely horrible and I'll give the I'll give the NBA credit. They've tried like heck to make it somewhat exciting. And actually watching it on TV, it wasn't as bad. But coaching it and playing it, our players and they deserve a lot of credit to play through that. Um, but they did. But we miss we miss having the fans. We miss having the, the ushers and having all the workers back. And hopefully, like I said many times, hopefully we keep adding to it and the Capitals can add to it and. The Nationals can add to it, and we have more fans, and the businesses are back to booming like the, the city needs to be. This week has basically been your first postseason-like experience. Uh, I'm just wondering what it's been like for you approaching for it, prepping for it, and now that you guys have been successful, what it's like on the other end? Um, really just making sure my mental is in the right spot. Um, yeah, that's just the main thing. This is basically playoff basketball. Uh, when we had played last game, we had played, you know, it, it just the energy was different, things like that. And it's something that I really have to get used to if I want to make it a long way in this league. Um, so just really just taking the time to just really just lock in and be able to come out and just perform, you know, not really just let anything get to me, not let like the reps get to me, or let the fouls get to me or anything like that. Just really just coming out and just playing basketball because, I mean, it's playoff basketball and the intensity is way high. I mean, I got to come out every night in the postseason and play with that same intensity because guys are not going to have any sympathy for us or anything at all. And you got into uh, foul trouble in the Boston game early. And Scott talked about how he felt like so many guys uh, didn't play their best game in that game. And he said he thought you guys came out with a different intensity in this game. How, how did you interpret that intensity for yourself coming into this? I mean, we, we didn't want to lose. That's the main thing. We, gotta, we came out with a mentality that we weren't going home today. Um, you know, it was going to go home in this situation and we came out and we took care of business. We did the things that we had to do and we came out and we played a great game. Now we just have to turn it over and do it in the playoffs. Chase. 
Daniel, you had uh, five blocks in the first half. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen very often. Um, what what led to that uh, breakout right there? Um, really just going up and just contesting as much as I can, you know, helping out my teammates if uh, they would get beat off the dribble and just really not worrying about what's behind me. Main thing that I always worry about if, like, I go block shots or anything like that, um, <clears throat> you know, my man is going to always get the rebound. You know, just really just like going up to block the shot and just making sure it either comes to me or it goes to somebody else on the team. That's just my main thing. Not really just worrying about everything else that's around me, just worrying about the main task at hand and just protecting home. And uh, in the first half, I, I saw during a timeout, you had a pretty long conversation with one of the refs. Uh, it seemed like kind of demonstrating um, maybe how to defend without fouling. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was that conversation about? And, and just, um, you know, I guess, what does it say about your quest to continue to learn and get better? Um, it was just really about the first foul that I got on Sabonis. I was just asking, like, what did I do wrong and what could I what I could have done better in that situation? And it kind of um, it helped me. It helps it helps me to learn in that situation because down the road, you know what I'm saying, it, I'm going to have to be in the game and just be able to withstand not fouling. And the main thing I want to do is learn how not to foul. Because, you know, I'm sometimes a foul magnet. <laughs> and I just, you know, I want to put it into that. Um, and tonight, just really after that first foul, you know, I always go up to the refs respectfully, even if like I'm in a game or anything like that. I try to, you know, respect the refs as much as I possibly can. And I just asked him, like, you know, what what I could have done better. And he said I was like stunned at the ball and stuff when um I was like it was McConnell that threw the ball to him. And you know, he said if I would if I you know jump with verticality, I don't get that foul. And those are the things that you know, like talking to the refs and things like that, just learning and being able to you know turn that over to the game that'll help me stay in the game longer. You know, I don't want to be a foul. I don't want to be a foul prone guy. I don't want to be a guy that they go downhill at and like, oh yeah, he's going to foul every time. That's not my mentality. I want to be better uh, defensively when it comes to that. And that's just my, um, that's just my opinion on that. Ava. Uh, Daniel, Brad has talked a lot about how important he feels it is for him to be available, even while he's dealing with the hamstring. Just what effect has seeing him kind of play through that and, and be out there and want to be out there for you guys um, had on the team or had on you personally? Shows that he wants he wants it more than anybody. I mean, you know, it, it takes a lot to play through a hamstring injury. And just seeing him come out and play through it every night that um, every night after that he's done it, it's just, it's. I mean, it's amazing to me because, you know, that's what separates him from like a lot of guys in this league. You know, it's a lot of guys that I would say, you know, hurt themselves and they kind of, you know, dwell on the fact that they're hurt and, you know, try not to come back into the game and just kind of like, you know, like I said, dwell on it, certain things like that. But I mean, if you got a guy like Brad and he's coming out playing on a hamstring injury, it's it's a tough situation. I mean, I, I don't understand the pain that he's in and I'm not, he might not even be in any pain, but just coming out and showing the heart and the toughness that he's shown and still playing like at an elite level that he's doing with that type of injury is just it's a great thing. That's what separates him and puts him in that category with a lot of other great players in this league. And obviously you guys move on to Philly now, but um, how do you view the matchup against Joel Embiid? And, and are you almost ha happy to have that challenge, like salivating over you guys get to go at one of the best bigs in the league? Yeah, I mean, it's a great challenge for me and any other big on this team. Uh, we just got to come out and match his physicality. That's the main thing. You know, he's going to talk a lot of, he's going to talk a lot of trash, I'm for sure. But, you know, Joel Embiid is one of the best bigs in this league. And we can't just come out, think he's just going to take it easy on us. You know, he wants to win too. So we got to come out and match his physicality. That's the main thing. You know, we got to play at the same level he's playing in, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on in the game, no matter what the refs do. And no matter just, really just no matter like if it's like minutes or anything else, we just have to come out and play because he's going to come out and play from the start to the finish of the game. Ben Standing. Hey, Daniel. Obviously, it's now been uh, a, a while since the trade, and you've gone through this whole ride with this team. But for you personally, do you sort of pinch yourself at all and think like, wow, that how, how well this has gone from, you know, considering, you know, you never know what, how a trade's going to work out? Yeah, I mean, I was overwhelmed with a lot of emotion after the game. I just had to kind of like, you know, hold it in. <laughs> but um, I mean, other than that, like I said, I felt that this trade was, I would say, I would say the best thing that 
could have happened to me and with the, with the situation that I was in in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? I understand the business side of it. So, you know, um, they had to make changes. And I was one of those changes with Hutch being traded here. So I understand completely. There's no beef or anything with Chicago. I love Chicago. I love the staff, love the coaches, everything through and through. But, I mean, it's the business side of the NBA. So now I'm here and I came in and I did what I had to do. You know, they told me I had a job here. Coach told me I had a job here. He was like the block shots, set screens, pick and roll, catch lobs. Simple as that, you know. He gave me the freedom to do what I wanted to do in the game. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I just can't. I, I just come out and play, you know. And, and not to uh, end your celebration thoughts here, but obviously up next is a big challenge in Joel Embiid. What are your initial thoughts uh, about that matchup? Mm, just like I said, we just have to match his physicality and his energy because, I mean, he's going to come out working, and we got to come out working too. This is a great opportunity for us to – push further into the playoffs and be able to, you know, make like let the name of Washington Wizards be known again. Because I mean, it, from what I've been seeing, it's been a while since we, since they've been in this situation. And, you know, it's a great thing that we're back in this situation. And it's a great thing that I'm back, I'm on this team and helping them be in this situation, you know? All right, last question to Neil. Hey Daniel, obviously, you know, you guys didn't have the game, you guys won it last time. What was said before this game to, you know, really make sure you guys got focused and were able to take care of business? I don't even think anything was really said. We all came in and we had it on our minds that we was going to win this game. And that's what we came out and did. We were all, we all came in together. Brad does his speech before the game. You know, y'all, he says, <laughs> he says, play together and just, you know, work hard and just be there for each other. That's, that was the main thing. And the mentality was to come out and just win. Simple as that. Um, but other than that, it wasn't really even anything that was really just said. Everything else was said after the game. That's pretty much it. You know, we worked to be in this position, and that's what we came out and did tonight. Rui, after um, battling through foul trouble against Boston, um, what was your mindset coming into tonight uh, what, that led to a bounce-back game? Um, you know, I mean, like the last game, um, it was just awful, you know. Everybody was in the first trouble, um, you know. Especially me, I had a, like two, three quick one, uh, you know, the first half, and but you know it was it was a game, you know, one of those one of those games. So after the game, right after the game, we we just we say you know just forget this, forget about this game, and then we just gotta switch your gear, um, switch your mind, and just focus on this game. And then I think we came out with a good energy tonight uh, from the beginning, and especially defense, but you know we are locked in. And offense, you know, you know, it's like, you know, we, we, we're a good offense team. So, but yeah, it was a, it was a great game. And after that game, um, did you get any advice uh, from any of the veteran players? I know Russell Westbrook's kind of taking you under his wing or did any, anything that anybody said to you kind of stand out as you went from that game to this one? What, what game are you talking about? This game? From, from Boston to tonight, was there, did any of, anyone give you any, any advice of, for how to bounce back? Um, we just, as a team, we just talk about, you know, um, whole team, we have to, we got to just step up our game, you know, um, it's just the playoff time, you know, and the Titans are different, but, you know, it's almost playoff team. So we just got to, um, you know, play our best, you know, like there's no, even the coaches always talk about the playoffs is different and, you know, every, every single play counts, you know, it, it matters. Uh, especially, especially from a jump ball. So, yeah, today we we actually did um, we did a great job since, uh, from the beginning and from jump jump ball to every single play. You know, we fought through and uh, yeah, I think uh, we made a good step. Fred, hey Rui, uh, you guys now have a series against Philadelphia. And they have uh, obviously some very good large wins and Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons. And, and I'm sure you'll be responsible for, for guarding a bunch of players like that. Uh, how do you feel like uh, you can fare and be successful in, in those kinds of matchups when you're kind of having to defend a good big wing for you know, every minute you're on the floor? Uh, for me, I think it's just got to be stay locked in and being physical, you know. Um, especially those guys, you know, they, we can make them comfortable, um, you know, especially like 
you know, beginning of the game. So um, I think we're going to make a statement. The first game, you know, we we just not playing around. You know, we we here to win the game. Um, like 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 I say, you know, just gotta be physical. That's the key um, to win those games. Yeah. Christos. Hey, Rick! Congratulations on the win. In your second season, you you are ready for your first playoff appearance. How? What it means for you that? Uh, it means a lot, you know. Um, I never been in the playoffs, but everybody said the coaches, the players, um, they've been to playoffs. Um, they say it's a different in regular season, you know. Uh, it's a different intensity, um, physical, everything, you know. Um, so I'm excited, you know. I'm excited for it. Um, last year we didn't make it, and then this year, um, you know, a chance to go, you know, play the playoffs. So I'm so excited about it. Yeah. And also tonight, your leaders Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal brought a lot of passion, a lot of desire to win. What is it a kind of boost for you, for you, for the whole team that uh, that passion and how would you describe the the mood in the team? Mood in the team right now? Yes. Uh, it, it's great. You know, um, we're just trying to win. You know, especially the last, uh, especially Russ. You know, he he always you know he always trying to. You know, you know, bring a good energy. Uh, especially, we have a lot of young guys too. So you know, sometimes it's hard to like just stay locked in the game and stuff. So he always like, a, you know, make us you know stay locked in the games and you know. So, but yeah, him and the Brad, you know, we I know how much you know we want to win. Uh, we want to make the playoffs, and now we're here, and uh, you know, we know just just go and play and like you know whatever. You know, we're gonna actually. Uh, go out there and then win those games. Neil. Hey, Rui. For you specifically, you know, you always have to get a tough defensive matchup. How are you able to just balance, you know, you need to be aggressive, but, you know, you don't necessarily always have the ball in your hands. How are you always trying to help in other ways uh, on the court? You talk about defense or offense? Both sides. Um, I just gotta be aggressive, you know. Um, the, always the coaches, the Russ and the Brad, he, they always tell me, you know, if I'm aggressive, you know, good things happen. So in the defense, be uh, like I said, like, you know, I gotta just be physical and then stay locked in and the rebounds and the deep offense. Be you know, I can just you know, I can play my games. You know, it's just there's nothing. You know, really like I just being aggressive, you know, staying aggressive and uh, locked in the game. I think that that's the key to, you know, um, stay in the game and uh, um, help this team. Russ, we were told tonight that there was um, a moment in the season where you pretty much flat out told your teammates, I'm not missing the playoffs. Um, what do you remember about that moment? And when you when you say something like that, like, do you see an immediate effect or are you just saying it to be like, I'm going to let you guys know what I'm about? Uh... I don't say I don't talk just for my health, but honestly, I uh, just wanted to let the team know that, uh, you know, this season at the time, you know, we were struggling and everybody was doubting us on the outside and uh, we had to figure out a way to, to knuckle up and, uh, you know, make the playoffs. Simple as that. I didn't care what happened in the previous games. And moving forward, we had to figure ourselves out, look ourselves in the mirror and start with myself. And uh, I made it clear to the guys that uh, we will make it. What was your preparation like for this game? Obviously, you had a lot of games to to kind of pull from, but what was your main focus coming into tonight? Uh, just attack. Um, you know, I wasn't myself last game, but, uh, you know, my job is to make sure I'm in attack mode, find a ways to keep my teammates involved, bring our energy. Um, and tonight, I did a better job of that. Chase. Hey, Russ, you guys have earned a first round series with the Sixers uh, and Joel Embiid and, and everything they represent. What, what is it? What stands out to you about that matchup and your reaction to facing them? I um, mean, they're number one team in the East for a reason. They uh been playing well all season long. Uh, and they're a good team overall. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of guys, a lot of different talent on the team. Uh, we got to make sure you prepare the right way uh, and going with the series and, and taking one game at a time. 
And D Daniel Gafford obviously had a, a huge game, five blocks in the first half alone. Um, how impressive was he tonight? Oh, he was great, man. His energy, uh, his athleticism is key for us when he's playing at that level and protecting the basket. Um, it was huge for us tonight. He did an amazing job. Fred. Hey, Russell. Um, I know you've, you've gotten to have a really good relationship with Rui. And, and he obviously struggled in the Celtics game and, and seemed to come out with a different sort of intensity tonight. I, I'm just wondering how you saw him react to that Boston game and, and how he turned it around tonight. Um, you know, I thought he was, he was fine. He just unfortunately got a foul trip, which happens to the best of us. But tonight he did a good job of uh, just sticking with it, being aggressive. Uh, when he's aggressive, our team is better. I've always told him that. Um, and he's one hell of a parent. He's going to be a great in this league for a long time. Uh, my job is to find ways just to keep uh, trying to bring the best out of him. DA. Russ, nobody, I'm sure nobody had to tell you how you played the other night. So what are, what are those 48 hours like? Uh, <laughs> you'd ask my wife, my mom, my dad, my brother, people, they probably, they're so annoying with me right now. I literally, honestly, I was just so pissed just at my performance and um, just wasn't feeling the best, um, you know, when, when my team needed me the most, but, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, I knuckled down and, and took care of my body and made sure that my mind was right uh, coming in tonight and made sure that uh, my energy and effort was there and my team could follow me. And and how how does having 12 years of experience in the league allow you to bounce back from a game and not try to do too much in a big game like this? Yeah, uh, you know what? It's, it's, uh, it's very important. I'm, uh, when I was in Oklahoma City, uh, Mo Cheeks, he always told me, great players don't have two back-to-back -back bad games. And I always kept that in my mind and always keep that in my mind when there is a time when I do play bad, uh, make sure that I'm, I'm locked and loaded for the next game um, and make sure that I can go out and compete and, and make sure my team is uh, can follow, you know, my lead. Neil. Hey, Russ. Uh, you guys had 5K fans in the stands today. You were hyping them up. You know, they were very animated throughout the game. How much did that, you know, help you guys maintain that big lead you guys were able to get? I mean, it's important uh, having fans in the building, having, uh, you know, the D.C. fans here and, and keep them excited and engaged in the game. It's part of my job. It's something that uh, this game uh, brings out the best of, of all of us, especially with the fans in the, in the crowd. And I'm happy they're in the building. And uh, our job is to make sure that we can have more and more games to come to this season. Just first of all, you, you guys have advanced out of the play-in tournament. You've earned a first-round series against the Sixers. W what's your reaction to doing that and the way it went down? Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us. Uh, you know, it means a lot. You know, I think uh, it's probably one of the best games we've played all year. Uh, it was definitely the most important one of the year. Um, and we were all locked in and engaged, man, uh, for a full 48 minutes. It's probably the, probably the most beautiful thing I've seen us do all year. You know, we really dialed in, stayed locked in, and uh, and didn't give any signs of life or hope, you know, to the other team. So uh, that's a good bounce back from the other night, 100%. So I'm just happy that, you know, I haven't been in the playoffs in three years, so I'm definitely happy to be back. Kind of related to that, um, Kind of see you, you smiling a lot out there and uh, celebrating after big shots. And I, I feel like I haven't seen that in a while, maybe since 2016-17. Um, is, is this the most fun you've had playing basketball in, in a while? Is it safe to say that? Uh, no, that's not safe to say. I always have fun playing a game. Um, it's something that I just, I've been blessed to do. And, you know, God has blessed me with unbelievable talent to be able to go out every night and be able to, you know, utilize those abilities to the best of mine. So I always take pride in that. And I always enjoy playing a game because these gifts can can always be taken from me. Um, but, you know, it feels that much better knowing that you're, you're playing for something and you're winning. Uh, obviously, you always want to be on the other side of that and, and win and uh, in that regard. So, you know, it, it definitely feels great to, to be back in a, in a playoff position. But, uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't change my happiness one way or another. You know, you're obviously going to be happy 
to be in the playoffs and be happy to win games. Uh, when you're losing, you're not going to be that way. So uh, we're definitely happy. And I'm definitely happy that we are where we are. Brad. Hey, Brad. Um, Scott and Russell both said that you guys kind of came in with a different sort of intensity these last two days after the Boston loss. I was just wondering for you personally, what, where, how did that intensity show for you guys as a team leading into the game and just kind of what these last 48 hours have been like for you? I um, mean, we just knew what was at stake. Um, you know, we, we fought and competed our tails off to uh, put us in the AFC uh, to begin with. And, you know, we, we played a tough one against Boston. We wish we would have got it, but uh, we gave ourselves an opportunity, you know, and it's granted a play is double elimination for seven and eight. So uh, we gave ourselves another opportunity. And, you know, like I said earlier, this is, this is winter go home, you know, and we understood that. And our preparation was like that immediately after we lost to Boston, you know, once we lost to Boston, it was okay. We're locked on, we're locked in on Indy. So, uh, I'm just happy that we were able to get our rest, uh, be locked in, and, and came out and executed tonight. And uh, you guys now have a series against the 76ers in the first round. How, how do you – I know you had 60 against them earlier this year. How, how do you view that matchup? Uh, it's going to be good. You know, uh, we love – no matter who we match up against, we, we love what we're capable of doing. Uh, we'll stick to our principles and uh, and go from there, I think, Probably out of two or three times we played them, we feel like we could have won two games. Uh, you know, so it, it'll definitely be interesting to be competitive, obviously. Um, we haven't seen them in a long time. So, you know, it, it'll definitely be good to be able to see some different faces, uh, you know, in a different team. And it's the first of four. So we're definitely excited about it. Uh, they're a good team, obviously, number one in the East. So, you know, we got our hands cut, our hands full. And. Uh, we realized that, but we've been playing really good as of late. So, you know, we we, we got a lot of noise to make our, ourselves to. Ava. Brad, we asked um, Scott earlier about you just playing on the hamstring. Just first, how are you feeling about it? And and um, knowing now that you have to play potentially a, a seven-game series, do you have to go to like a different mental place of like, okay, I have to manage it, not just physically, but I have to know that I'm going to prepare every night and not feel my best. No, I mean, nothing's changed. I mean, it's been that way for the last three games I've played in. So, I mean, it's not, there's there's not going to be any significant um, changes. I mean, especially if I'm playing, it's obviously going to, um, you know, wear down a little bit, but it's been feeling better. Uh, tonight, I was a little bit more comfortable and confident in it. Um, and that's that's been a positive, you know, we're trending in the right direction. Obviously, I'm still, you know, being cautious about certain movements and out there on the floor, but, you know, I'm able to to move and manipulate some things that, that work in my favor. So, uh, you know, seven game series, there's no, no change in my approach. Uh, you know, it's, everybody's hurt during this time. Obviously mine is a little bit more, you know, significant, but, you know, it's all about the team and taking care of my body, which I've been doing. So uh, as I've been the last three games, just being more cognizant of movements like I have been and do whatever it takes to win. That's all I care about. Matt Pierce. Hey, Brad. Uh, you referred to Russell as probably the best teammate uh, of your career. Just, I I'm kind of curious, how, do you, how did you see that play out over a season, like manifest itself just you know, with the ups and downs that you guys went through, especially? I mean, nothing's changed with him. You know, his mental is always the same. His approach is always the same. And that's something you can respect. He's not a front runner. You know, he's not just somebody who, when things are going well, he's he's up. Or, you know, when things are bad, he's in in, in a shell. Like, he's not like that. You know, he stays even keel. Uh, he stays true to who Russ is. And and I think that's the, the beauty of uh, the acceleration of his game and, and our game as a team. You know, he, he holds everybody accountable, but he holds himself to a higher standard. And, uh, and it trickles down to everybody else, you know, and uh, I think like Coach said, he actually mentioned a couple of weeks ago, he doesn't plan to go on vacation, um, you know, anytime soon. So, you know, we kept that in the back of our head and dug down and, and, and fought to get wins. So, you know, he's an imperative, you know, big piece to our success and, and we'll be moving forward.
You're on, sorry. Um, Brad, can you talk a little bit about the guys uh, that have been uh, out with injuries and uh, we saw a lot of uh, you know huge support from them today? Uh, who? TB and Denny, you know, just being part of the team uh, during this this uh, last uh, you know week or so. I mean, it's that's I think it's actually required of all of our guys to be back around the playoff time, but it's. It's always great, you know, just to be able to see TB's rehab going in the right direction. Uh, you know, he's he's working on strengthening that knee, and it's always always positive to be able to have guys around and and encourage encouraging their teammates. And uh, it definitely sucks to be in our position because we know that they want to be out here. Um, but you know, it's it's even better. It speaks volumes to you know their character and who they are to continue to push push their teammates' root for them. Um, and have success for everybody. You know, we want we all eat together. You know, so uh, it's awesome to be able to have them back. Neil, hey Brad, you guys have played every other night or back to back games for the past two months. Um, you know, going into the series with Philadelphia, you guys have two days off between games one, games two, and games three. How do you think that might be able to help you, you know, get back to where you want to be health-wise to get that explosion back? Uh, I mean, hopefully, you know, uh, I'm not a fortune teller, so I can't sit here and tell you how I feel. I can't tell you how I feel tomorrow. So I literally take it a day at a time, um, just like everybody else. And you obviously, you know, you try to benefit off these days off that we get, but, you know, you still stay engaged and locked in and you don't want to be too removed from the game. So, uh we love it. it. It is definitely good to be able to have an extra day. Um, you know, we've been playing well, so you obviously want to try to keep that momentum going. And what was the environment like for you in Capital One Arena? It was great. Obviously, you know, we haven't had fans all year and, you know, the capacity has been constantly increasing. So, you know, it was it was definitely reminded us, reminded me of being in the playoffs and just being in meaningful games again. Um, and it's always good to be able to have our support system behind us and, and and definitely playing hard for them because, you know, they deserve it. You know, this city is a sports town, basketball town, too. So, you know, they've, they, they're they waiting on us to make some noise and really make a push at this thing. So, you know, we're appreciative of their support and sticking with us throughout the year. It was definitely rocky. Uh, but we're in a position to where we want to be, you know, and we're definitely going to rely on them and need them loud and, and anxious, you know, playing against a nasty Philly team. So we can't wait. Thanks, Brad. All right, last question to Candace. Hey, Brad, how are you? Um, obviously, Daniel came to the team late. And during that time, you guys weren't practicing. You guys weren't shooting around. So how were you guys able to build a chemistry with him, whether it's um, knowing where he's going to be at the lob, knowing where he's going to be in the back end to protect, um, to protect the rim? And just you know, build that on court chemistry. Uh, I mean, obviously, just playing. That's the only way you you can build it. We don't practice much. Um, it's tough to do it with our schedule, but um, so we we basically kind of learn to do things on the fly. Um, you know, we're we're easily adaptable to each other. We understand each other's strengths and weaknesses, and we play to those things. Uh, you know, we we believe we have some of the best playmaking guards in the league, and. Uh, you know, and, and for Gav's ability to be able to catch and finish above the rim, uh, it, it keeps defenses on us, you know, because Russ and I are going to attack ish. Neto, we're all going to attack downhill and, and put a lot of pressure on their defense and then our bigs and force them to make a decision. You know, either you step up and stop us or, you know, it's going to be on, on top of your head with, with Gav. So um, it's, it's just been, you know, playing. That's just a matter of even with him, him gaining more confidence, getting acclimated with how we play. Uh, you know, where he can and can't get the ball, uh, where, you know, Russ and I do and do not want screens and stuff like that. And it's just been, it's been an adjustment. We've been doing really good of, you know, holding each other accountable and learning on the fly.